Oh yeah, but uh, we try not to impose the so people. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, for the way to restaurant, it's very easy. You jump on the bus and basically go to Barcola. Oh, by the way, for those who don't know where the restaurant is, it's immediately after Barcola. So you leave the bus on Barcola, move a little bit towards town, and this is the first building on the right if you move towards uh, town. Uh, so this is really Yes, but not everyone knows that we went there about that. Yeah. Okay, um, the practical thing is how we get back after the restaurant. And for this, um, there is in principle the bus that even later the bus that goes to airport that stops in Barcelona and then it stops in uh, close to ICTP. But other options are either walking, if there will be no rain, or basically make a group of four or five and then ask for taxi. That is another possibility. So, but hopefully there will be no rain when we go back. Yeah, I think at midnight the sea bath actually goes all the way to Guinea. So the other day, um, we maybe fix it, but it's not on the schedule. Maybe. Oh, it's yeah. not on the schedule. Okay. I mean, I mean Frank Coleman successfully took the bath at midnight from the central station to Marco. Only was maybe it was. Yeah, it was a bath, the yeah, there was a bath at midnight from Central Station to Parco to Vignan. Yeah. Right. Okay, guys, uh, it's, uh, it's there are many options. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, we are starting our poster uh, presentation session. My request to poster uh, presenters to uh, be precise on time, namely spend one minute discussing your poster. And that should be enough uh, to be able to convey the message. So I'm going to invite uh, speakers according to the list. Please be prepared to share your screen right away. So we are starting with Mahdi Mashkuri. Please share your screen. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good. So uh, I share the screen. I hope you can see. Great. Please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I'm Mahdi and I want to share you about this work. We here uh, exhibit uh, a system that uh, the, uh, the despite the common expectation, topological superconductivity is fragile. And the trivial superconductivity is robust against the uh, magnetic disorder. So, uh, so this is basically based on a, a proposal from Jean Kane and Mele, where they uh, considered a, a hybrid structure of an iron-based superconductor and a strongly spin-orbit coupled Rushba layer, which has like interestingly three different phases. Red is the topological, and the blue is the trivial, which is separated by this nodal phase. And uh, our message is that when we evaluate the density of a state, we see, uh, if you stare at the red curve, which is a, a representative topological uh, point, uh, we see that by increasing the disorder from left to right, we see that the system becomes gapless, while the trivial phase in, in blue is, is robust. And the green is for a conventional space superconductor. We also looked at the the phase diagram, and we see that uh, generally the phase diagram has the expansion of the gapless phase mostly at the expense of topological phase. In contrast, the blue region, which is the, the, the trivial phase, is, is quite robust. We believe we can explain this by looking at the disorder, but in single impurity and dimers, which we looked previously in this PRB. I would be very happy if uh, there was any questions or comments to be reached by this email. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker, Rashid Masrur. <laughs> Rashid Masrur. Yes. <laughs> Rashid, can you hear us? 
You started screen sharing, but we don't see anything. <laughs> Sorry, we cannot yes. see anything on the screen. Uh, why don't we move to the next person and then return back? Okay, it seems we're having technical difficulties. Maybe we can uh, switch to the next person and then come back to Rashid uh, if the issue is resolved. Uh, Roman Mukachev, please go ahead and share yeah. your screen. Is it okay? Yes. Yes, please. Yep. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is uh, Roman Mohachev, and I want to introduce you to our work on the study of magnetic properties of metallic compounds. Uh, we have already performed several calculations with the compounds of this type. Would you uh, like to share it on your screen? Uh, I think I'm sharing. Maybe I will try another one. Is it better? We cannot see your screen. Hmm. That's strange. You can click on share screen yeah. button. I'm sharing it right now. We just see your logo. Okay, maybe. Uh huh. Uh, uh, yep. This was just a video. I know some software problems. Okay, yeah, maybe you can discuss it in words uh, without sharing your screen. Um, maybe uh, that's better. Nothing? No, we still cannot see your screen. I'm sorry, I don't know. I really don't know what's the problem. Okay, look, uh, unfortunately, we are uh, yeah. on a tough schedule. So maybe we can say just say a few words about uh, and then those will be interested um, in the queue. Yep. Uh, uh, in, in this work, we uh, study um, manganese, uh, manganese and uh, ruthenium compounds, uh, intermetallic compounds with manganese and ruthenium. And uh, the compound with ruthenium showed uh, different values of the density of electronic states uh, at the Fermi level from the previous study compounds. Also ruthenium uh, ions remains practically non-magnetic and uh, and as a show of my poster, that's uh, uh, like uh, ch changing uh, densities of electronic states and uh, other properties. And uh, uh, doping with ruthenium ion leads to changes both as a lattice parameter, electronic structure, and uh, uh, properties of compound that makes this system interesting for further study. So maybe I can post my poster in the chat or somewhere else. Yes, please. Okay. Thank, thank you very you. much, Roman. Uh, next speaker, Shantonu Mukherjee. Please, please unmute yourself, Shantonu. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Time is running. Yeah, so please. Yeah, so I am Santanu Mukherjee, and uh, the uh, title of my uh, presentation is Electron Vortex Interaction and Fermion Pairing. So in this work, we have chosen a boson-fermion mixture model, which closely resembles the model proposed by Friedberg and Lee 
in 1989 as a model for high tensile superconductors so this is the model by friedberg and lee and we consider here vortices in the scalar matter uh, and as uh, we know that vortices construct magnetic field in their core and also fermions uh, has access source of magnetic field therefore in such a model and interaction between uh, electrons and vortices is inevitable uh, so in our work what we want to uh, do is to uh, derive an exact form of this interaction and dualization may lead to an answer so we following the friedberg lee model we take an uh, relativistic model uh, like this where we have neglected the uh, direct coupling between uh, bosons and fermions and uh, dualize this model and therefore we get this dual model where you know, the two form ga gauge field uh, couples both to this uh, fermionic current and also the uh, wall sheet of the uh, uh, dual string which represents vortices therefore vortices and uh, this uh, electrons uh, are interacting among each other by exchange of uh, the two form gauge field and th this is the electron vortex interaction we wanted to find out and uh, one can show that this uh, electron vortex interaction can give rise to electron vortex uh, attachment and uh, this is represented by these two equations uh, so if we take two electrons and immerse them in a background uh, superconducting medium then uh, two uh, flux tubes uh, can be connected uh, to these two uh, electrons and therefore they will uh, be connected to each other and form a stable pair so therefore we see that electron vortex interaction emerges out of dualizing uh, a boson fermion mixture model and for nearly static uh, electrons uh, vortices attached to electrons and lead to formation of pairs uh, and also we have recently shown that uh, these vortex attached particles over fractional statistics when the system is reduced to a two plus one dimensional manifold uh, so uh, thank you and one if uh, someone is interested one can uh, uh, contact me in this email id thank you thank you uh, next speaker Fahim Sayed Fahim Nakvi. Fahim Sayed Nakvi, go ahead, please. Probably not here. Not here. Yeah, next uh, one. Next one. Mohd Obay Durahman. Yes, sir. Hello, I am Adiban. Yes, we can hear you. Please share your screen. My screen is visible now. Yeah, please go ahead. My name is Muhammad Abedul Rahman. I am working in the department of Saligan, which is in Australia. Uh, please this speak up. Uh, topic of presentation. Yeah. We, I, can hardly, we can hardly later. hear you. Cal calculate uh, the relaxation rate using the Kaldish uh, formulation. Uh, there are many theoretical methods apart from simulation. Uh, green function, Kuber method, and uh, Boltzmann transport, hydrodynamics, and uh, to explain the electron transport property of desired material. MNG approach, the simplest one of the Boltzmann transport theory, which treat the scattering of lepton within Fermi Golder rule, but the suitable only for the pure system in thermal equilibrium. And for scattering from the impurity, it uh, is limited for other types of disordered material. As well, established feature in the mesopressive sample is that the disorder scattering causes quantum interference among self passing power. Uh, a, a complication arises in the calculation of transport properties due to the modification coming out of the quantum correction in the disorder system. The theoretical method that is well suitable for incorporating this interference effect through the Keldis formula, which is based on the non equilibrium green function method. Here we use 
and from uh, this we calculate the first uh, collision integral and put this value in equation one uh, and from this uh, equation two we obtain equation three and from equation three from some approximation we obtain uh, in desired limit the relaxation rate is uh, li uh, linear dependent on temperature and for the pure limit is obtained t, uh, t square quadratic system and using this uh, relaxation rate we obtain the distributive uh, from this. Sorry, you're uh, approaching. Minute. Yeah. And this is my numerical and analytical problem uh, from which we can clearly see uh, when we uh, in, uh, uh, increasing the disorder, uh, the, uh, the resistivity is enhanced. And this, this is our cal uh, calculation. And for the query, we can contact uh, uh, with uh, my this uh, email ID. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, look, if everyone hear me from the, those who are going to give talk after that, uh, you have one minute to make your presentation. Don't try to give introduction, main result, and conclusion. Just tell us in one minute what's it about. So the idea is that other people should be able to contact you if they're interested. So try, just try to make a punch point from the beginning. Yeah. Okay, next speaker, Francis Miriam Orlich. Hello. Um, just give me a second to share my screen. Can you see that all right? Yes. Great. Um, well, there we go. Okay, so hi, uh, I'm Miriam, and I'm going to be telling you about the Kagome Lieb lattice, which is a Kagome lattice, but with an extra site added at the midpoint of each bond, in the same way the Lieb lattice is constructed from the square lattice. It's ubiquitous in metal organic frameworks, and it's a simple model of the recently discovered metal organic superconductor CUBHD. We found using a tight binding model that this model has five flat bands. And our aim was to understand why these flat bands are present and to see whether these bands would survive in a real material that breaks the assumptions of this simple model. So the flat bands arise from the topology of the lattice through the construction of localized eigenstates, which have the energy of the flat bands. These states form closed loops due to destructive interference. Now, this picture still holds even after adding the metallic on-site energy and the metal metal hopping shown in figure one. However, when the ligand hoppings are added, you can't make this argument anymore and the, you lose the exact flatness of the bands. However, um, when this happens, our bands at half fillings are still flatter and more isolated than those are twisted by layer graphene for a vast array of hopping strengths. Now, you can see this in figure four, where I've plotted the band gaps on either side of the central bands and all those bandwidths. And as you can see, the band gap bandwidth ratio for the Kagome Leap type mining model is larger than that of twisted by layer graphene for a similar model for a significantly broader range of hoppings than is likely to be seen in a real material. So, because of this, the Kagome Leap lattice is likely to display fun, strongly correlated behavior, such as superconductivity leading us to a whole new family of unexplored materials. I'll pop my email in the chat for anyone who would like to chat further. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, Omid Reza Ranjbar Naimi. Omit Reza Ranjbar Naimi. Not here. Uh, next speaker, Divya Rawad. Divya Rawad. Okay, not here. Next speaker, Jose Rodriguez. Great. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks, uh, organizers and uh, chair, uh, for the opportunity. 
Um, my name is Jose Rodriguez. I'm from Cal State LA. So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some theoretical work uh, trying to understand uh, compound. We've all been trying to understand iron selenide uh, uh, electron dope, which is a high temperature superconductor up to 50 degrees Kelvin. And so I looked at, and other, uh, some of my colleagues looked at uh, uh, nesting and uh, instabilities toward hidden order. This is not the Fermi surface of uh, iron selenide, but you can get uh, something that approaches it by looking, uh, adding fluctuations, uh, hidden spin fluctuations. And these are the uh, hidden spin fluctuations I was looking at between orbitals, in particular the isotropic orbitals. So there's no uh, nematicity in this, in this uh, model. And then if you do uh, uh, Ginsburg Landau theory, uh, sorry, Eliastric theory uh, with fluctuations uh, of the two bands uh, uh, connected with these orbitals. Uh, and if you look at the, uh, the fluctuations at criticality, so this is a critical spin fluctuations near a quantum, at a quantum, uh, near a quantum critical point, you can get a Lifshitz transition where um, the uh, you get electron pockets. You get uh, uh, let me try to get this figure here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You get electron pockets, um, uh, these orange uh, circles, and you get a uh, whole pocket at the corner of the Rollins arm. You get whole pockets at the uh, other corner. But the interesting point is the wave function normalization of the whole uh, whole pockets is weak. It's very faint uh, whole bands, whereas the electron pockets are moderate, so it, it potentially can describe electron selenide, this Lifshitz transition. And uh, you, uh, you find, a, I found a Cooper instability, um, uh, S plus minus uh, pairing, uh, where the uh, sign of the uh, order parameter uh, Cooper pair uh, alternates between the whole and the electron bands. So if you're interested in anything, uh, the details, uh, or just really understanding this, here's the paper that was published last year, and I'm I'll put my email in the chat if you want to uh, talk with me, uh, chat with me. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, Rod, uh, Jose. Uh, Next speaker. Right, let me uh, un stop here. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank next you. speaker, uh, Katarzyna Sadeka. Can you hear me well? Yes, please. Uh, so I wanted to talk about the fine structure uh, of excitons in type 2 TMD heterostructures today, where we describe the electronic and optical properties of molybdenum diselenide tungsten diselenide type 2 heterostructure using first um, ab initio methods and then tight binding approximation, uh, both coupled with um, solution of Metasalpeter equation which yields to uh, excitonic spectrum. So we start with determining um, the electronic structure of molybdenum diselenide tungsten diselenide from first principles. We obtain the type two band alignment and conduction band minima in Q point, as you can see here. Um, next, we perform the analysis of concham wave functions allowing to detect the leading layer and spin contributions and construct a minimal tight binding model of this heterostructure, which allows us to understand the orbital contributions to um, block state and study the effect of wave functions on the excitonic spectrum. So all the topological properties of the system. Uh, finally, we accurately solve the beta salpeter equation and determine the excitonic spectrum Sorry for that, as you can see on the last plot. Mm, considering both intra and interlayer excitons, and we use uh, simplified Ritova K additional local screening theory here. This all um, will allow us to finally study the effect of Moiré potential and compare it with fully tight binding approach to excitons in twisted Moiré heterostructures. Thank you very much. Thank you, Katarzyna. Next speaker, Yasir Salim. Uh -huh. hey, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Great. Let me just pull up the poster. Can you guys see the poster? Yes, we now can see your poster. Yes. Great. Go ahead. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, artificial graphene, uh, quantum dots, specifically this triangular zigzag edge 
triangular graphene structure. What's special about this structure is there's a sublattice imbalance between sublattice A and B. And uh, this leads to broken symmetry and gives a spin polarized ground state. So I developed some model to describe the system in terms of artificial potentials at sites denoted by the points on this uh, triangular lattice, well, hexagonal lattice shaped as a triangle with zigzag edges. And what's special about this system um, is that if you diagonalize a single particle Hamiltonian, you find uh, a nearly degenerate shell uh, at zero energy or at the Fermi level, we'll say. Um, the, it's not perfectly degenerate due to next nearest neighbor hopping terms that emerge in my Hamiltonian. Uh, so then what we can do is understand many body physics on this shell of degenerate states as a function of being able to tune the parameters of my artificial system. For example, the width of the confining potentials, the separation between sites, the depth of the potential. Since it's an artificial system, you kind of have a playground of tunable parameters. And what we find uh, are two distinct regimes, one which is metallic and one which is antiferromagnetic. What's key here is that because we have broken sublattice symmetry at half filling, Lib predicted a spin polarized ground state, um, meaning that uh, the total spin of the ground state was proportional to the difference in sublattice A and B. And in the weakly interacting regime, we have a metallic phase, but since our system is still spin polarized, we observe that the extra electrons occupy the edge of the system. And in the strongly interacting regime where U over T is large, uh, we have an antiferromagnetic insulator. So this was just mean field calculations. We then took it a step further and did uh, included correlations in the system. And what we found is as a function of filling of the system at half filling, we had a spin polarized ground state. And away from half filling, you get a dramatic drop in the energy gap and other lower spin states emerge in the system, effectively becoming kind of like, um, um, we'll say a, a button for turning on magnetic properties are turning it off. And that's all I wanted to say. Uh, these results are published. And if you want more details, um, the Asser Salim at the University of Ottawa, and I will um, put my email in the chat. And I kind of wish I was in Rome. So everyone enjoy Rome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Next speaker, Murtetsa Salehi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, let me to share my screen. Oh, please go ahead and share. Uh, I cannot share my screen. I think uh, the Yasser screen is now broadcasting. So there's a green button that says share screen. If you click on it, it should you should be able to share. Uh, can anyone see my screen now? No, no, no. Uh, maybe Yasser screen is no broadcasting. Please. Uh, no, he stopped sharing. I don't know how to solve the problem. You be able to share yours. If it's not working. Maybe we can. Uh, I don't know how to solve how to solve the problem. Maybe yeah, you please. can restart yes, your is Zoom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But my maybe yeah. you can restart your Zoom. In the meantime, we will uh, go to the next, uh, next speaker. Yes, sir, please sh stop your sharing. No, he, he stopped sharing already. So next speaker. Matumita uh, Sarkar. Madumita Sarkar, please. Next Not one. Here. Next speaker, Jamile Sayed Yazdi. Hello. Hello. Can you see my screen? Uh, uh, not now, but uh, something has started. Now we cannot see anything. 
Is that okay? Nope. Okay. No, now it's okay. Yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, we are studying the uh, degenerate versus non degenerate JPA's gain and application in quantum two, uh, two modes squeeze rather. Uh, JPA is Josephson's parametric amplifier. Uh, here you can see. Here you can see the schematic representation of the um, quantum uh, two modes squeeze radar or QTMS radar. Uh, JPA is at the heart of this uh, quantum radar that produces entangled signal and idler. We either can have a degenerate JPA, uh, which has a signal and idler uh, with the same frequency, or a non degenerate JPA that uh, there is a small difference between their frequencies. Here we show that uh, using a non-degenerate JPA is going to improve the performance of quantum radar. Our evidences for this claim are shown here in these uh, graphs here. Uh, for example, in uh, figure two, you can see that uh, uh, if, if I uh, show these two um, solid lines, they are for maximum and minimum gains for degenerate JPA. But as you see, the um, dotted line on top is for non degenerate JPA uh, gain for uh, idler. So um, here, the here is the first evidence that say mm, degenerate JPA works better. Another evidence comes from SNR, which is signal to noise ratio. And uh, as you see here, the non degenerate one uh, works better. And this is versus the uh, number of modes. And the, the other one, uh, which shows in the uh, figure four, is then the left side uh, is for degenerate one and the right one is for non-degenerate one. Here we, uh, we use the quality factor internal one, which is fixed between these two, but we increase the external quality factor. And at the same time, we are uh, calculating gain. Sorry, time is running. So maybe you can just summarize quickly what's in yeah, the poster. I see that this non-degenerate one uh, works better because uh, higher Q value uh, means lower loss. Therefore, when we have lower loss, which is desired for quantum brothers, um, we have higher gain as you can see here. So these are, uh, our evidence is to show that non-degenerate JPI uh, JPA works better for the quantum model. If uh, I have time, I can uh, talk about my second poster or not. Yes, no, unfortunately, sorry, we need to move on. Yeah. Okay, uh, here is my information. If you can uh, give me a comment or discuss. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank very much. Thank you. Sarah. Thank you. Thanks. Next speaker, Muzamil Shah. Muzamil Shah. Not here. Next speaker, Mustafa Syed Ahmed Shalabi. Ahmed Shalabi. Not here. Next speaker, Sh Shalia Sharma. Shalia Sharma, please. Yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, please go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. Yes. Can you speak up a little bit, please? Yes, please. Can you say it? Hi, yes. I'm Shelda Sharma from IIT Mandi, India. I will present our work, Electronic Properties of Palladium Intercalated Dismantelorite Topological Insulator. So motivation for our present work is palladium is a high Z element and shows exchange enhanced magnetic susceptibility. So we have studied evolution of electronic properties and topological surface state properties upon palladium doping in 
bismetallurite and here we see this resistivity of these crystals show metallic dependence upon low temperature and this hall resistivity shows electron as majority charge carriers for electro bismetallurite and in pre at it changes to p type upon palladium doping and here we see this magnetic resistance decreases upon palladium doping and here we have analyzed this shubnikov d has quantum oscillation using lipschitz kasvich theory and we all further performed rps measurements along the gamma m direction and here we see that this depicts a narrow line width for bismetallurite and this here we see this bulk valence band as well as this dirac point energy shifts towards the fermi level upon pd doping this is well in conformity with the hall data that shows a n to p type crossover upon palladium doping and here we see this hexagonal warping effect decreases upon palladium doping and it turns towards more circular therefore taken together this sth data and rps results we see that there is a reduction in fermi wave vector from sth data and this reduction is due to the band bending effect and this band bending effect is induced by the schottky barriers at the metal semiconductor interface and this is inevitable for the magnetic transport measurements so overall these studies discuss correspondence in parameters obtained from rps and magnetic transport results and for more details you can follow this paper or write to me thank you thank you next speaker gabriel morera souza hi can you hear me hi can you hear me yes we can yeah hear we you. can hear you but we don't see your screen now can you see now we can see your screen go, go ahead please okay thank you very much my name is juan i will be presenting about effective activity for fractals the model please, i am working with. please speak up okay uh, the model I'm working with is was first proposed as a fragile light quantum glass by Castelnovo and Chamon. It is defined in uh, HCP lattice. Uh, it is described by the this Hamiltonian one in which P are prism operators defined in here. And the properties of this model are it is ex exactly solvable. The eigenvalues are plus or minus one. Therefore, the eigenstate is when all the P operators has eigenvalues plus one, and the model is gapped. Uh, the most interesting properties are the mobility properties. In the Z direction, the excitations are mobile, while in the XY plane, the excitations are fully immobile. They are fractals. And if we try to annihilate free excitations, we see that uh, the formation of a fractal membrane characterizing it as a type 2 fractal. So to construct an effective field theory, we propose these gauge fields with these gauge transformations. And we can see that it presents the desired properties because if we uh, study the interaction action, we see that there are two uh, charts, conser conserved charts, Q and QF. And QF uh, 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 shows the desired property about the fractonic behavior because F is an harmonic function. Uh, this is what I have. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. Uh, next speaker, Malik So. Oh. Yes, we can hear no. you. Please, please share the screen. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, but we don't see your screen. Let me share my screen. Please. Please let me share my screen. Please share the screen, Malik. Right. Try to share it. Yes. 
Malik, we cannot see your screen. Uh, maybe you can uh, just uh, restart Zoom and in the meantime, we'll move to the next person and then we'll come back. Okay. Uh, let's move to the next speaker, Samudra Sur. Can you hear me? Yes, please speak up and share your screen. Yeah, uh, now am I audible? Yes, yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, driven Hubbard model on a triangular lattice, uh, tunable Heisenberg antiferromagnet with three spin chiral term. So in this work, uh, uh, we have studied the interplay of periodic driving on a strongly interacting uh, electronic system on a triangular lattice. So we start with a half field Hubbard model on a triangular lattice and we drive it with an electric field which is in plane to it and the form explicitly breaks the time reversal symmetry. Then we incorporate this uh, electric field into the uh, system uh, following pulse prescription by adding a phase in the hopping term. And uh, we use a theory called Floquet perturbation theory uh, in the limit that the hopping terms are much less than the interaction. Uh, then we see the low energy excitations are described by the photon assisted virtual hopping in the nearest neighbor sites. Then using this Floquet perturbation theory up to third order, we uh, derive an effective spin model, which has uh, nearest neighbor Heisenberg couplings, uh, which is anisotropic in three different directions and also a chiral three spin term, which has plus and minus sign for up and down pointing triangles. So these couplings of this effective model, J alpha, J beta, J gamma, and C uh, can be tuned by the dri driving parameters, which are the amplitudes of the electric fields, E1, E2, the frequency of the field and the angle of the electric field theta. So here it is shown uh, for some values of uh, amplitudes and frequency, how uh, the couplings vary with the angle of the field. Now this term C uh, vanishes if they, if the driving field is time reversal symmetric. Now from this effective Hamiltonian, we do an exact diagonalization on a six cross six lattice system with periodic boundary conditions. And to reduce the Hilbert space to a tractable form, we use the symmetries of zero magnetization, translation, spin inversion, and simultaneous parity inversion along X and Y axis if C is zero. And then we study the different ground states uh, of this model using uh, the spin structure function and we find that there are four types of ground states of them. Uh, so four types of ordered ground states in the system uh, of them, three are collinear and one is coplanar of 120 degrees type. Uh, time. And we also have three type of uh, spin liquid ground states. And we also found, find the phase boundaries using, using fidelity susceptibility, real space correlation and energy gaps. And here we show the phase diagram we have these seven phases of these four are ordered and three are spin liquid. Uh, so, and this is a work which is published in PRB this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. <clears throat> Next okay. speaker. Uh, please, I, I, I think it is okay to, to, to share my screen. Uh, Malik So. Yeah, Samudra, yeah. please. If you uh, can, just go ahead and share your screen. Yes, go ahead. Samudra, please. Uh -huh. Yeah. Malik, so go ahead. Yeah. No, unfortunately, it doesn't work. I think we cannot see your screen. Uh, now maybe something is going on. Unfortunately, it's probably a bad connection because it started and then crashed. Yeah. 
you know, let's try. Yeah, Malik, uh, maybe you can just say what's the, uh, what's your title and uh, in few words, what uh, the poster is about. <laughs> Malik, could you describe your poster in just the words, in simple words? Yeah, I guess the screen is frozen. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's yeah. move on. Sorry, we need to move on. Now, next speaker, Jill Swami. Jill Swami. I think I have problem with mouse. Not here. Emmanuel Terito. Emmanuel Territo. Not here. Shannon Way. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello, I'm Trent. Uh, I'm going to show how the strange mental face uh, appears in disorder to style graphene and how this is related to the uh, weak coupled SIK bundles. Uh, this should help us understand the relationship between the supplantive phase and the uh, strange metal phase in the tuspallography. Uh, as it is known that uh, the metric angle tuspallography harbors flat bands or ideas to break the flat bands into bundles. Uh, to break flat bands, column disorder is induced, uh, cause potential creates puddles. Uh, intuitively, localized flat bands are just trapped uh, by these puddles uh, inside each puddle. Uh, which is also uh, which, which will also becomes a, a slightly bundle. The interaction of the flat bands just makes them um, uh, make them interact with each other, uh, creating an auto interaction, just like the SIK behavior. And uh, the bundles are also weakly interacting with each other. Um, at strong disorder, uh, the specific heat is computed at low temperature, showing the SIK behavior. Um, and here. Uh, by computing the auto time or the correlator, the enough exponent of the and the uh, bus fly velocity is also extracted. Uh, we can see that at low temperature, the Lyapunov uh, exponent is just linear in temperature, which is a typical behavior of the uh, strange metal. Also, uh, the bus fly velocity shows a non-family type uh, temperature scale, uh, which scales as uh, t to the sum power, which is larger than one. Um, all this concludes the chaotic uh, strange mental phase. Also at weak disorder, um, as one can expect, uh, the system recovers the superconductivity and the auto time model correlator just shows the uh, exponential decay. Uh, as a result of all this, we come to the phase diagram, uh, just like this. Uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Next speaker, Razia. Beran Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Um, okay. Share screen, please. Yes. Is it okay now? <laughs> okay. Yes. Good now. Yes, go ahead, please. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Razia Beyramland, and I'm here today to talk about some of the interesting features of spin orbit coupled uh, junction based on graphene. Um, to get started, I want to propose a junction, as you can see in the figure made of two ferromagnetic region and a spin orbit coupling layer between them, which is all based on a graphene layer. And you know, both magnetism and spin orbit coupling can induce into the graphene layer by proximity effect. So we have a very good setup to, um, actually to changing the orientation of magnetization to produce a spin polarized current. 
Um, study this current and the spin torque exerted on the junction, we can see there um, this situation that the bias voltage drives particles from the left ferromagnetic region into the right one. So, so if we consider the effective Hamiltonian, uh, like this equation, for each three regions and boundary conditions at x equal to zero and d, and then calculate the, what, the wave functions and other parameters. We can study the quasi-particles reflections and transmissions, um, and then other features like spin torque, uh, spin conductance, and spintronic properties. So you can see in this figure that, um, that it is the main result of this study. The spin transfer torque as a function of spherical angles of magnetization in the ferromagnetic region. So, so when particles hit the interfaces perpendicularly, the spin polarized direct fermions transmit perfectly through the boundaries um, of junction and, and the spin transfer torque is up to zero. Um, so in the presence of a spin orbit coupling, a non-zero spin transfer torque reappears because of the band structure modification. And, and finally, we hope that these findings can be applied in the proximity in the spin orbit coupling graphing system experiment. Um, for more discussion, you can contact us with this email address and see the um, original um, um, uh, version of uh, our article in the archive. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Razia. Next speaker, Farnood Gamsari. Hello, you can hear me? Yes. 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 Maybe I have uh, some problems. Uh, let me correct it. Excuse me. So. Can I, can you see my screen? Uh, no. Uh, if I have time, I... Uh... Yeah, okay, let's go to next one and then you will try to fix the problem. Let's okay. go to next one. Good, uh, next speaker, Getahun Alema, Alema Yehu, uh, Getahun Kumela. Get a hun on Alema Yehu. Not here. Ahmed Chafai. Next speaker, Ahmed Chafai. Okay, not here. Uh, so, anyone from the previous speakers who had uh, technical difficulties? Anyone wants to present? I think just my presentation is remained, yes? Yes. Go ahead, try. <laughs> okay. okay. Maybe you can describe it in, in just words. Uh, let me try again. Let me try again. Okay, uh, I can uh, uh, talk it in audio, no, no problem. <laughs> I can do it. Please go uh, ahead. Uh, during my recently ended postdoc period, I have worked on several questions about many body and transport properties of phosphorine, which is highly anisotropic monolayer material. One question is, is to find the generalized hydrodynamic approach for Landau Fermi liquid in its most, most anisotropic version. It is well known that in long wavelength limit and finite frequency of external perturbation, the current density within linear response regime is equal to viscoelastic model of electron liquid. A question is that what is the elasticity hydrodynamic correspondence would be in the case of anisotropic liquid like that of phosphorine? This question then arises 
what is the appropriate hydrodynamic model uh, for 2D electrons in general, and especially uh, for phosphorine as an orthorhombic uh, two-dimensional two landau Fermi liquid. We can go further to find viscoelastic model uh, for a generic uh, anisotropic uh, 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 viscoelastodynamic equations with 18 independent viscoelastic moduli. Uh, and uh, the solution, within the solution, the uh, crystal matrix and metric tensor emerged emerges out uh, naturally and uh, put it in equivalence in line wavelength limit to uh, the microscopic theory of uh, uh, the of our microscopic theory by means of the exchange correlation kernel and go beyond the random phase approximation and modify the RPA plasma. We can uh, see that the gravity theory is here efficiently emerge out as a viscoelastic version. This rings the bell in the mind for a holographic duality, viscoelasticity as the gravity and microscopic theory as our field theory. And uh, when, uh, uh, let me briefly discuss about my motivations, which- Time, uh, sorry, sorry for this time, yeah. Thank you very much. I put my uh, con uh, contact information- yeah, Just put your email address, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much for the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So this concludes our uh, poster discussion section. Thanks to everyone.